I've got a $2,000 budget to spend on only Pokemon cards all around Japan. I'll be searching for the coolest promo cards, secret rares, and even opening some sealed packs of Pokemon cards, and I'm getting all of them graded. So not only are we looking for rare Pokemon cards, but we're hunting for pristine 10 potential. I'll be stopping by multiple cities in today's video, but we're starting in the largest city in the world, Tokyo, Japan. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Why are we going so freaking fast? This city has literally hundreds of trading card shops, and our first First store actually takes us below ground, like multiple stories below ground. It's time to go to Mandarake. So you've got these flashing lights. This is like a, we're going into a cave. Like they literally got like stalactites and stuff on the ceiling. This is Mandarake, a well-known secondhand store that has many locations around Tokyo and loads of different items in each, not just collectibles, but also books, toys, movies, and of course, Pokemon cards. Oh my goodness. This is wild. Look at all these singles. This is literally our first stop and I'm already a little overwhelmed. They also had lots of other trading cards as well, so it wasn't just Pokemon. Ando, this was the perfect place to come. I think we got more better dangers to come, but it's <laughs> Oh it. my gosh. I am for sure gonna cop that. I gotta double check on the, the okay, pricing so on that. Oh, that's the, is that the vending series? Oh my gosh. Oh, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I'm Cool, I might grab that. I had them grab a few cards from the case for me to check out. I actually did have a few of them that I set back, but I'm super excited about the ones I snagged. A couple of them I think I might just be for my personal. I'm gonna look at the condition. That's a diamond. Yeah, that's really cute. That's a nice one too. Classic AI. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a Is it solid? Is this sealed? It's like unopened? Get. I ended up picking up a sealed Southern Islands collection that has three promo cards inside, plus a few cards for the collection. By the way, during our journey, I actually got a couple of cards graded for those of you watching this video, so make sure you stay tuned to see those grades and how you could win those cards. We also stopped by multiple Pokemon centers around Japan, and the Shibuya Pokemon Center was absolutely legendary. Like, literally. There was a gigantic statue of Mewtwo submerged in, like, this glass tube with all these bubbles and stuff. Ooh. This is literally like one of the busiest subway stations I've ever seen. As we scrambled back on through the Shibuya scramble, we made our way to our next stop, Card Secret. This store is absolutely stocked with Japanese cards, booster packs, and plushies. They even had a whole selection of Pokemon card booster packs in other languages, which I thought was super unique. Wait, look at how many languages this is. Japanese, Thai, Taiwan, Indonesian, French, Portuguese, Italian, Spanish, German, and English cards. What the heck? Indonesian Evolving Skies pack. I'm gonna get one Indonesian booster pack. And then you should get the sealed Mario Pikachu box down there. Bro, do they have it? Right there. Oh, they have it. All right, that one might be a little bit out of our budget. I also wanted to give a huge thank you to my friends Unlisted Leaf, Real Breaking Nate, Basically Marie, Sarah Natacheni, Bear Walker, and Jordan Fringe, who you'll see all throughout this video. We traveled all around Japan together and had the best time, so be sure to check them out as well. Oh, ho, ho, this store is huge. Wait, look at all these. This is ridiculous. The Crystal Charizards. I need a bigger budget. Oh, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> they had aisle after aisle after aisle of different Pokemon cards. Some were for competitive play, while some were for vintage, modern, and they even had a completed set of the old school card ass cards as individual singles, as well as like selling an entire completed set of every single card. That's so cool. What about the Gengar serving up some uh, oh the drinks? Oh my gosh. The Dream Eater in action. The Lickitung one's hilarious. Do they have all the different manga in Japanese? They're the whole series. Oh, That's the whole series. Oh, this is interesting. Oh, this is a brick. This is heavy. Why do we risk it? What call what? For that biscuit. Ten bucks, and you get probably the cards on the outside, and then the rest is gold. I think these are gold. So the suitcase would be quite heavy. Yeah, that would weigh it down quite a bit. I love all these cosplay ones. So cute. This guy. Oh, yeah. I think I might have to go for that one. I'll get one each. I'll get the lower yeah. you get the better. Mm -hmm. oh, They're oh. so precious. Oh, I love them. They're so fun. <laughs> well, that was a Shibuya. We went to that one yeah. today. Yeah, we literally went to that Pokemon Center. I don't think we got any perfect ones in here, but I think I'm going to go with this guy. Have you got many of these at home? I don't have any. Oh, yeah, I should check the condition on that. Absolutely. That looks pretty cool. I don't know what that Pikachu with the rainbow is from, because that one would be cool to get as well. We came across the Pikachu Isle, and Sarah, our friend who is the voice of Ash Ketchum on Pokemon, is on a quest to find all of the Ash Ketchum cards around Japan. Well, yeah, I have a question, Andrew. Do you have anything with Ash on it? Oh, Ash. Do you like Ash? 
I like Ash. <laughs> Look at that. That's so Yeah, yeah that's a really that's nice one. That's literally song. you and your son. <laughs> you and your son. I'm gonna get all of Ash's pictures. <laughs> I pulled a few cards out of the case that I thought were pretty unique. There are a lot of Japanese promo cards that we just never got in the States, so I definitely want to pick some of those out. I made my selections, including this super cool Reds Pikachu promo card. Oh no, I was gonna get this one. What do you need it for? It's for my video. Are you kidding me? How about make this the video? You give the voice of Ash Ketchum. <laughs> <laughs> we, we you stole another card the, from me. We were there at you the same time. You stole another. This is what we Danny does. We, we go to a store and they just take everything. You snooze, you lose, Sarah. All joking aside, we made sure to find Sarah another Reds Pikachu at a later card store. Sorry. So I walked out of there with a few new Pikachu promos, including this cute Osaka Pikachu Pokemon Center promo card that Ando and I got as little buddies, plus a Pikachu Summer Festa promo, an Indonesian Growlithe promo, and of course the Reds Pikachu for a little over 15,000 yen. Hello. I'm very sweaty. It's hot. I think like 90 degrees. Oh, and humid. High of 95. Ooh. Sarah and I went on a little side quest to hit up some more card stores and may have gotten ourselves into a little predicament. So the next store we're going to, literally we're, we're taking a little bit of a gamble on because on their like Google reviews, there's no photos of any of the cards inside. It just says it's a trading card game store. I'm pretty sure this is it. We go to the third floor. You wanna walk up or use the elevator? Oh, this is, oh my God, oh my, oh my gosh. Wow, this one smells weird. It, does, it smells really weird in here, I don't like it. Huh? Is there a trading card game store in here? Close, close. What? <laughs> oh my god. Let's, go home. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Oh okay, it's supposed to be open, is the thing. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, go, 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 go. So that one wasn't, we took an L. That was exciting. This looks so sketchy. It's so sketchy. What the heck, man? Luckily, we found another card store that was right around the corner that was fully stocked with trading cards. Like, literally, multiple floors of these glass cases just filled with different cards on display. They got some goodies. They got some goodies. This is a good stop. Look at all these cards. There's so many. Y'all, this is crazy. After perusing the cases for a bit, I picked out a few sick full art Japanese cards to take a look at. Oh, this is so cute. This one. This one. Yeah. Thank you. It's you. No, it's not quite me. It's, it's almost you. It's almost, it's almost you. These ones are looking pretty good. You have a habit of taking cards right from under my nose. I ended up picking up the Professor Oak setup, Beauty Full Art, and Red's Challenge Full Art for a total of 28,000 yen, which is almost 200 US dollars. Whew. Next, we're on our way to Osaka, Japan, which is known for its incredible food, nightlife, and in our case, game stores. Is, is it in that one? Or is it in that one? That one? Oh my gosh, we're going all the way up there. Oh my goodness. Can I, do you wanna you wanna buy that one for me? Yeah, me. It's like one. a gift. I, I take like maybe two or three or have many they have. That's it? Yeah. Okay. I don't need to, man. I'm not going to be greedy. I just want to get more, but oh. yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go okay. ahead. Yeah. Thanks, Nate. You're the best. I, no problem. Anything. Anything for my best friend. <laughs> Bunch of the new cards in here. The Ruler of the Black Flame. Pokemon 151. I'm being so serious when I say that I have never experienced collectibles in game stores like what you can find in Japan. Like, straight up, nothing that I've ever gone to in the U.S. compares. Oh, it's a claw machine with DS games. They got all these Nintendos with the box. You got, look at this just stack of Nintendo 64s. <laughs> PS2s down there. Oh, man. Check that bad boy out. <laughs> this is so fun. Look at this. Oh, Kirby! My son! I love this. This is awesome. We stumbled upon a shop with retro games filled to the brim. So many games for a wide array of vintage consoles. And they had just aisles and aisles filled with Nintendo 64 games and a lot of different complete in-box games. And also the area that we were in had so many random trading card game stores that we were literally finding other card stores to stop into on our way to the card stores. We could have literally spent days exploring this neighborhood. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Dude, they got some big boys in there. Ooh. Base of Venusaur. Got my son. Oh, I didn't see the challenge. Ando, you want one? Oh, they're $160. Oh, that one. Oh, I was gonna say that one's like really affordable. It must be not good condition. 
because that one is it's half the price. Yeah, that's crazy the price difference that's on that. Horrific, like damage on the side. Yeah. Like, I got these and they were out of 151. Okay. So the shop owner gave me a personal. One oh one whoa! One. So I thought it's gonna be lucky. Just one from the personal stash. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. The guy's gonna cry when you pull something ridiculous. Yeah, you've been looking for 151 all all trip. Oh, I know. Really all right, Psyduck. Good sign. Oh, Charmander. Yeah, that's really cute. Yay! That's awesome. Congrats. Hell yeah! Thank you. So this right here, you pay like 50 bucks, and then all these cards are faced the other way. And you point to the one you want, and you oh. flip it around. So it could Are be you one of these kidding? Bangers, or it could be like two dollars. And this is a really popular card game in Japan. This sounds really fun. Yeah. What? No. What? What do you mean no? You gonna do it? I think so. I did it at the other card shop. I did three of them, and I got two dollar cards each. I lost like ninety bucks, I reckon. Oh man! You pay five thousand yen, which is about thirty-five US dollars, and. You select one random card and then you see what you get. Hopefully you get more than 5,000 yen in value, but it's a total toss up. So we'll see what we get. What are we thinking? This one. Yeah, that's the one. So I got to go check out first. What'd you buy me? I didn't buy you nothing. Oh, sorry, Sarah. Thank you. I'm kind of nervous. This was 35 bucks. Oh jeez. Okay, Blastoise CX. Oh, Zero Aura V Star. Oh, Shaman V. Okay, that's a secret rare. Reshi Ram. And oh, Lolan Vulpix V. So we did get some secret rares from the boxes. So actually, like they, these two are regular ultra rares, but these last three are secret rares from Japanese booster boxes. It's actually not bad. You are right with this? Yeah, I mean, could have been better. Could have been worse. Could have been worse. You know, I'm pretty content with what we got. I don't really know what the floor was on the pull game, but after Ando told me about a few horror stories of getting a card worth like $2 out of these, I can't complain. After speed running a few more card stores, it was back on the bullet train to continue our journey around Japan. During our trip, we stopped by the beautiful city of Kyoto as well as Nara, Japan to be blessed by the deer and also made our way over to Yokohama for the Pokemon World Championships. During my time there, Nate and I actually each shot an entire video dedicated to completing challenges all around Pokemon Worlds, where we battled head to head to see who could complete the most items on the list. So I definitely recommend you check out that video after you watch this one. On the eighth floor of this building, there is a store called Book Off. Baby's first Book Off. We stopped by a secondhand store called Book Off, which is a popular chain kind of like Mandarake that we stopped by earlier in the video. And they also really had the goods. Like you never truly know what you're gonna find in stores like this. And it seems like it's straight up. It's always something different. They had a bunch of bins with some of their lower value cards and then just cases and cases of Pokemon singles. I wanted to take a look at a few of their promo cards. I guess this was a big Pikachu trip because most of the cards I picked out were Pikachus. Look at Nate and I's matching shirt. So cute. I think like going into this, you can definitely see that there's like damage on it, so it's not gonna get a 10. God, it's really, really cute. But I think just to have this in my collection, especially because we went to the Osaka Pokemon Center yep. and we got the Osaka card, we went to the Kyoto Pokemon Center, and now we could potentially get the Kyoto card. I think I'll go ahead and do can it. Go for yeah. it. Yeah, dude, I just like just got all Pikachus, I'm pretty sure. Pikachu, Pikachu, followed by oh, Pichu. Whew. The bag has been secured, and I got a whole sampler platter of promo cards for 24,000 yen, which is about 168 US dollars. Pretty good deal for the cards I got, to be honest. After hitting up yet another Pokemon Center, we literally went on so many this trip, I regret nothing. Nate and I swung by a couple of card stores in Tokyo, one of which was yet again right next to Shibuya Crossing. Why are we going so freaking fast again? Bruh. We had some celebrations cards down here, some tag teams. This one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. After perusing through their cases of singles, I saw so many that I thought would make some awesome additions to the collection and ended up snagging this Blissey V alternate art for 7,980 yen. We got some conveyor belt sushi and made a quick visit to another card store before getting ready to head back to our bus, which was our ride back to Yokohama for the day. Look at them. <gasps> Oh my gosh, wait, they have the little cafe Pikachu. Now it was also at this moment that Nate realized he messed up. He accidentally left his Pokemon Center bag at the sushi restaurant, which was in the opposite direction of the bus. And we literally only have 10 minutes until it leaves. And the transportation company said verbatim, if you're late, we're gonna leave without you. Oh no. Nate I got, <laughs> I got my Pokemon Center stuff. 
at the sushi place. And our bus leaves in like 10 minutes. So we sprung into action. Left, right, here. Yeah. <laughs> and then a right and then another left. This is like amazing race. Probably still there. <laughs> <laughs> What's in there, you might ask? It's just a wiglet plush. Hey, Nate. Yeah. Are we going to check to make sure we got our Pokemon Center bags next time? I got it. <laughs> Turns out we're both actually pretty out of shape. Yeah. We made it to the bus, sweaty and gross, and with literally one minute to spare. Whew. After our week in Yokohama at the Pokemon World Championships, we headed back to Tokyo to hunt for some more cards. We still have over $1,000 left in this challenge, so there's plenty of cool stuff that we can pick up. Is that at the top? Look at this. It's seven stories. All right. <laughs> Trading cards had to be all the way at the top. Yeah, so this one's got some really interesting cards. Some of them I actually have not ever even seen. Some of these extra rule cards. These are really cute. Dude, that one's got a big old crease in it. <laughs> I could literally spend my whole video budget on one card in here if I really wanted to. Oh my goodness. The gold star, Jolteon, Vaporeon, and Flareon up there. I'm gonna ask about the Zapdos. Oh man. They got three shining Charizards. This shop is crazy. Some of these stores, I am genuinely flabbergasted by the pure quantity of these high-end, super sought-after cards. Like, it's truly impressive that they just have these all available. There's so many. I counted at least two or three. Cards? Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's at least two, at or, least, two least. or three cards in here. Maybe right. more. Right. Here it is. This is a really cool card. Yeah, no, I'm like, I don't know if, can, if it's catching it, but there's like a lot it. of, there's a lot of scratches on the back. It's weird, it's on the back. The front looks, yeah, the front looks pretty good. I ended up snagging this super funky McDonald's Chikorita promo card for about 5,000 yen. Thank you so much. Thank you. I got the goods. You got the goods? Yeet. This is so cool. The shop is just filled with retro games of all different kinds. Let me check this out. Wow. Look at them all. So many games. We popped into another game store which was stacked to the brim with old school games, then ended the day by going to Don Quixote where I found the cutest Snorlax onesie. It is. Danny, what's your name? I'm Snorlax. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> the next day, we're back at it. First order of business, matcha lattes and some souffle pancakes. Oh my gosh, look at that drizzle. We took a quick stop by the infamous Takashita Street. <laughs> and then headed straight to the card stores. You can find cool shops all over Tokyo, but I have to say we found some amazing stores near the Shibuya Station, as well as in Akihabara, which is well known for its anime and gaming scene. So if you're planning a Pokemon adventure in Japan, I recommend planning at least a few hours in each of those places to explore the shops. We got a bunch of the Unigaba Eevee collab in here, some celebrations cards. Look at them. Look at all the Pikachus. This store had quite the variety of cards in their glass cases, and I found a few cards to check the condition on. This one and this one are both Yokohama cards, which we just went to the World Championships. So I think it's really cool that these are both from Yokohama. Okay, I'll get this one. After checking out the merchandise, we snagged two new cards, the Yokohama Pikachu promo card, along with the Unigaba Jolteon for 12,780 yen. And I know this is not good, but I really wanted to try another mystery game, so the next shop we went to, I decided to test my luck. Out of this machine, you've got the option to get any of those cards all along the wall right there. There's some really, really rare ones at the top. So what's the card you want the most? So, I mean, I would love to get that gold Charizard. The Cynthia is awesome too. Yeah. 1,000 yen. It's cooking. Oh! Almost dropped it. Because they were hoping for like tier one or two or whatever tier is above that. There's something above that. That's what we're hoping for. Tier two! Oh no oh, way! Oh, okay! Yeah. Let's see. Oh, dude, that's Small. awesome! Yay! Yeah. <laughs> oh man, we can get some cool stuff. That's amazing. Check that out. Okay. Entei is really, really I cool. Was, I was eyeing the Entei or that Raikou, man. Yep. I've really been wanting that Raikou. Can't believe that. That's awesome. Raikou. Yeah. Wow. Pizza. Yay! Good? We did it. How cool. I also got this cute little meatloaf. 
Look at him. The goods have been secured. We had to do another part of Tokyo. And let me just say, I think this train going into the side of the building situation is so cool. Japan's public transit is fascinating and should be studied. I'm looking at you, Los Angeles. So we made our way to another mall that was actually kind of confusing to navigate, but we stopped by another Mandrake store, which this one actually had like three or four different storefronts in the same mall with different types of goods. So we finally found the trading card game one. From the second hand stores, I needed to be more vigilant on checking the condition of the cards because they weren't really specialty trading card game stores and they likely aren't analyzing the cards as strictly as some of the other stores we went to. Better to be safe than sorry. This is the Pokemon machine. I've never seen this before straight up. We were having trouble actually figuring out how to like figure out what card it was. It's from Bending Series 3 and it's literally got all the Pokemon cards So it looks like out. there's uncut shades and they yeah. go through the color. Yeah, that's so cool. And then there's like literally employees back there like working on the, making the cards. And then this this one, this is an Imakuni car. I thought the art was really fun on both of these. It's funny, dude. Wow, what the heck? Okay, so we're going to the third floor up there. It's called Card Shop Spiral. Wee! Oh, yeah. What's this? What's this? I want that. 120,000 or what? I don't know what that symbol what means. What does that symbol mean? I think yeah. that means it's a lot. This card shop has so much cool stuff. Like, I don't know if the Pokemon community got here after Worlds. It is looking a bit bare randomly on the shelves, but what's there is pretty good stuff. We got Giratina in here. Man, they got some nice ones in here. Oh my goodness, look at that. Oh, look at him. Okay. And they got the Starlight and Eevee promo right there. Really cute. I see a couple cards in here. This one and this one. I snagged a couple of spicy meatballs out of the case for further inspection. Let's see if these are the real deal. This one, it looks good. It's just a little off center. This one looks more centered for sure. Yeah, I think this one looks great. I think this one's got a good shot. And I have to say, so many of these stores were so accommodating and definitely willing to take the time for you to pick the exact cards that you wanted, and I thought that was really nice. What we got so far. This one I don't think is a perfect 10, just because I think it has a little bit of, slightly off center, like a tiny bit, and then something in the corner, but it's good enough for me to give it a shot. I think it's gonna, this one will probably get a nine, and I'm hoping this one gets a 10. I also ran into a viewer of the channel while we were checking out some of the cards. This is Connor, and he said that after watching one of my YouTube videos over 10 years ago, he decided to attend his first ever Pokemon event, which led him to become a top level professional Pokemon player. You watched one of my videos going to a pre-release event, and then that's when you started going to pre-release events? And that's when I started going to like competitive play events. That's when I first found out about competitive play. And so I got my player ID at that pre-release after watching your video. And now I'm a top level professional Pokemon player. Wow. I travel the world playing. And you, stuff. you flew out to the world championships yes. as a, a top player. Yes, correct. And, wow, that's so cool. It's so nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. Yeah, that's so awesome. awesome. That genuinely brings so much joy to my heart. And it really goes to show that sometimes you don't know who's watching your videos or who may be impacted by them. And the fact that I even had a part in Connor's Pokemon journey is absolutely incredible. I snagged the Blues Tactics Full Art and the Red and Blue Tag Team for a total of 18,000 yen, which I'm super happy about. These cards look Awesome. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Sarah and I made one last stop to another secondhand store, which I believe is an extension of Book Off called Hobby Off. I would purchase if it was like flawless, but I think I'm gonna pass on this one. Maybe Can you buy time. me this little Ash Ketchum though? Why do you want me to buy you a little Ash Ketchum? Because it'll be nice of you. Okay, the day has come, the very last day of our trip in Japan. I'm heading to Ragnarok Gaming, which is a store that I've been dying to hit up all trip. I'm on my way to meet up with my friend Jason, who I've known for a very long time. He actually just recently opened up a card shop in Tokyo. And I can't wait to stop by and see him. I'm sure he's got a whole bunch of stuff that we could check out for the video too. All right, I think this is it. There's not really any sign or anything that says that this is a card store, but... This is the address. I love how businesses can truly be found in all the little side streets and areas that you really just wouldn't expect. And then boom, trading card game store. So we get a little bit of a early access here. Look before the store is actually open. Thank you, Jason. You're the best. Look at him. So this is one of the first stores we've come across that has had English, like a really, really nice selection of English cards as well as the Japanese cards in here. So I think that's pretty cool. And that goes for singles as well as like sealed stuff. This is crazy. This chunk feels like an American card store. <laughs> 
It's like we're not even in Japan. Jason's store had a ton of awesome cards and collectibles, and I actually got an early look at the store before it officially opened for the day, which was super kind of him to do. I went ahead and picked some cards from the case to check out, and that's when Jason realized he actually didn't have the key. What? His employee, who is there when the store regularly opens, has the key to literally all of the glass wall displays and display cabinets, which means I couldn't get anything. So, we're gonna put a pin in that and return back when the store officially opens at noon. In the meantime, Jason, who knows this area well and is a Pokemon super fan just like us, has offered to show us around to some of the other awesome trading card game stores in the area. Oh my goodness, I love this. They got the Neo decks over here. Oh, that art book that came out, the illustration collection. And the Mario and Luigi Pikachu. We're coming here a little bit earlier in the day and it looks like some of the stores are not even open yet. You know, I feel like a lot of this stuff opens late and closes early. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, that's how it is. That's how it is. We noticed that we like went to go to some shops and it's like, oh, they're not open yet. And then later in the day, we wanted to stop by and we're like, oh, they're already closed. Yeah, most stores close at eight. Ooh, those are cool. Look at all these sleeves. I've never seen sleeves in a case before like this, like a locked this case. Wow. This mall is literally eight stories of shops with many floors being dedicated to collectibles. Wow, how cool. So these cards in here, they've got a price on them, right? But the number next to the price is basically indicating the grade that that might get when it gets sent off to get graded. So you'll notice these two Dragonites are the same card. One of them is more expensive. That's because the grade would be higher if it were to go get graded. That's really, really cool. I think this is the first card shop where I've been pointed, like that's been pointed out to me. Oh, really? Yeah. Are we can find any tens in this case. It's a nine. Okay, I'm gonna test out this store's uh, like grading system that they've got here. I think I'm gonna snag this vial plume and this trainer card up there. I think those are both super fun. And it's like an inexpensive way, I think, to test out the grading while still maintaining the rest of our budget for some really cool stuff that we're gonna find at some other card stores. All right, so these ones I bought purely for a science experiment because it has the grade, I guess, like in theory, what it may grade as listed on the card. So we'll see if that actually lines up when we go to get them graded. There's so many, I think this is like the eighth floor of card stores. This is crazy. They literally print like the back of what the booster pack would look like out there too. What the what? I've never seen this. So you take this up and then they give you a real booster pack. I'm having the best time. <laughs> I seriously, I'm kind of shocked by the amount of card stores in here. And they're all just like pretty fully stocked. So in this case, there are, there are not only some cards that aren't like actual, the actual printed cards. Those are like sample versions, literally just printed on printer paper. Um, but the ones that have the yellow tag on them may indicate that the card itself is damaged and that's why the price is a little bit lower. I did not know that. So if you're going through looking at those, like the ones that have the yellow tag on them, are probably a lower price because the condition is not as good on those. I've been trying to find one of these in a 10. That one I can see edge wear on it. But Uyama's Pikachu, I'm coming for you. In Akihabara alone, yeah, there's 200, 200. Over 200 card stores in this specific like neighborhood, if you wanna call it that. Yeah. Now we're heading back to Ragnarok Gaming to finish off our shopping spree. Whee! Look at this. It's huge. Ooh. Oh my goodness. This box is crazy. I wish I would have bought it when it came out. The Mimikyu box here. Okay, you've got a lot of really, really cool stuff in this case, Jason. I'm Ian, so down here at the bottom, there are some Japanese vintage booster packs. I see two Team Rocket packs and one Gym Heroes. Team Rocket is one of my favorite vintage Pokemon card sets and I would love to try to get that Dark Charizard. Really any of those Gym Heroes cards are super cool. So I think we're for sure gonna snag those out of here. And then I want to take a look at the condition of some of the cards in this case over here, because there's some really, really awesome ones. This whole trip, I've been trying to find one of these Scream promos that, it, that is in good condition that I think could potentially get a 10, uh, or at least a nine. So I'd love to take a look at both of those. All right, so yeah, these guys down here at the bottom. I think this would be super fun to unbox these and just like see what we could possibly get out of these packs that we could then grade and send to CDC. So we'll see. Well, I think we're guaranteed three hollows out of these packs. So we'll just see what ones we happen to get. 
I took a look at two different Munch Scream promos, the Rowlet as well as the Eevee, and both of them look really good. So I'm gonna pick them up in hopes that we can get a 10 on both of these cards. They're definitely the most expensive singles that we bought on our shopping spree. So I'm really hoping that we can get some good grades on these. I'm deciding to pick these up. I'm super excited. The art on these is so cool. And I was actually looking for them at quite a few of the shops and I couldn't find any that I thought would be like a really, really good fit for like the graded collection. Maybe, fingers crossed there's a 10. We'll go ahead and see when we get those graded. So we got these two Scream, Munch Scream promo cards, which are so cool. This came in a, a collection of five different ones. There's a Pikachu, a Psyduck, Mimikyu, Rowlet, and Eevee. So we got the Rowlet and Eevee, I think that's super cool. And we're also gonna pick up three Japanese vintage booster packs. All right, so if you're ever in Tokyo in Akihabara area, make sure you stop by Ragnarok Gaming. Highly recommend, they have some awesome stuff in here. Thank you guys. Bye. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh boy. I can't wait to open these. So we're actually gonna open these back in the studio. Uh, I'm literally about to go catch my plane right now. This is the last stop and we got some really, really sick pickups. I signed an autograph for Ragnarok Gaming's official wall of fame, the world champions and then me. <laughs> and now it's back to Los Angeles to see all the cards that we got over our entire trip. Meow. We are gonna go ahead and do a quick rundown of what we picked up, just so we're all on the same page for what we're gonna send in. Obviously we got them from a bunch of different locations uh, and they're all kind of packaged up a little bit differently. So these will be in no particular order. By the way, on the trip home, all of our cards were stored in the World Championships deck box right there, which I thought was super cool. I snagged that from the World Championships pop-up in Yokohama. I'll be putting them in some other sleeves and then the semi-rigid card holders to keep them safe on their journey. So once they make their way over to CGC, there's no chance for them to get damaged or anything. I'd like to give a huge thank you to CGC for sponsoring today's video. We'll be sending all of the Japanese cards we picked up throughout our adventure to get graded at CGC, and they've just revamped with a brand new grading system and label designs this past year. With pristine 10s being the highest grade possible, a step below that is now a Gem Mint 10, which were previously referred to as Gem Mint 9.5. They also revamped their label design with the sleek new look with pristine 10s getting this beautiful gold finish. Check out CDC in the description below to learn about their new grading scale, label designs, and to submit your cards for grading. And thank you CDC for making today's video possible. Good luck Blissey. The Bulbasaur as well as the Arcanine right there. The collection of Pokemon Center Pikachu promos. Now at first glance you're probably like, Danny, these are so random. Why did you get these ones? To that I would say. We actually stopped by all of these Pokemon Centers on our journey through Japan. We went to the Shibuya Pokemon Center. We actually went there with the Pokemon Company as well. We stopped by the Pokemon Center Osaka DX. We stopped by the Kyoto Pokemon Center. And we also made our way to Yokohama for an entire week at the World Championships. And full transparency here, I don't think any one of these is like completely flawless. I think all four of them here have like a little something something. This one Marie had actually pointed out to me, it's an Indonesian. I I believe Indonesian Growlithe. We've got another Pikachu promo here. I thought this one was really cool because of the rainbow. <laughs> this one I thought was so awesome. And I actually had to, uh, <laughs> I had to fight Sarah Netta Jenny, the voice of Ash Ketchum for this one right here. Here's the thing, we did end up finding it at another store, so it all worked out. Sarah and I both got this card, but I thought this one looked absolutely amazing. The art on it is so sick. This one, we got a cute little Pichu. Not expecting a super high grade on that. We got it from like a second hand shop, but I thought it was really, really cool. And this one also in the same boat, we got it from a second hand store. So this one is also not mint, but I thought the art on it was incredible. As you saw in the video, we actually got a great deal on this because we got it from one of those vending machine games. These ones I thought were super, super interesting. Some vending series cards, one with Imakuni, And then this one, it says Pokemon machine on it right there. Literally it's depicting how Pokemon trading cards are made, like coming out of the Pokemon machine. We've got a Japanese Scarlet and Violet promo right here. Oh man, it's looking pretty good, except I think there's like literally a, like a subtle indentation right there. Aside from that, this one looks really, really good. So this is the Mischievous Pichu, and this one actually has like a little barcode on the package. Really sick art. It's like Pichu either vlogging or being captured in a moment where it's like creating mischief wreaking havoc. I have to admit this was my one big regret from this haul is that at the store where they had this Unigaba Jolteon promo, I'm pretty sure they had the entire 
entire collection of every single evolution. I passed up on it. <laughs> so, oh, I forgot about these ones. Oh, I forgot about these ones. We've got the Professor Oak. We also got a beauty right here looking absolutely beautiful. And big boy, big boy right here, red, coming in hot. The art on all these ones again is just top notch. I love the texture on them as well. Like they just all look really, really clean. Oh, jeez. Okay, this one I kind of, I did that one in. Ah, my son. I really did it up here where I did like blue, red and blue, and then red. Like I literally got the full set. And I didn't realize I did that when I did that, but I did that. This one, let me tell you, I'm going to tell you right now. Sorry, I just watched Scarface. I don't know where that came from. It came from Scarface. It came from Scarface. I don't see a darn thing wrong with this card. I think this one's gonna come back with a 10. This is a spicy, spicy meatball. Wow. We've got an e-reader McDonald's promo here. This is the Chikorita. We got the Eevee and the Rowlet Munch Scream promo card. So as you can see on these, these are like themed after obviously the world-renowned Scream painting. But in the background of the Eevee one, you can see a Psyduck. And in the background of the Rowlet one, you can see the Mimikyu. The Eevee was 40,000 yen and the Rowlet was 20,000 yen. That is pretty pretty steep for one card, but I wanted to make sure we had some really sick cards to showcase from our trip to Japan. So obviously I'm hoping for some really high grades on these. Now these ones right here, I thought were super interesting. Will this vile plume get a seven? Will the Heracross get a six? And will this very special trainer card, I actually don't know the name of this, touch change? Will touch change, change of touch. Is that what that, I mean, I guess. Will change of touch actually get a six? Wish us luck on those. We did get a Southern Islands card here. And actually that segues perfectly into this last item here before we open our packs. This is a really, really cool collection of Japanese cards. It's called the Southern Islands collection. So this is like the whole setup. It's crazy that like at the time, Literally at the time this came out, it was 200 yen for these three cards. This is like, that's crazy. The price difference on that is just absolutely mind boggling. Oh my gosh. Whew. All right, here we go. Wow, check that out. So it comes in like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, how cool, wait. Wait, this is so cool. You get a Southern Islands postcard. And once again, there's six different postcards uh, for the six different sets of this. And they're all like theme different, but all the art like flows into each other. So you can see that this is all like one complete image that is separated into three cards. They do that six different times. How cool is that? This feels like it's like time capsule kind of stuff. Like this is nostalgic. I'm hoping they're in good condition here. So we're pulling out the Mew and this is the risk you run with getting vintage stuff this Mew I don't know how that would even happen maybe from age maybe from something else it's just got a bunch of these specs where the the like I guess like the finish on the holofoil is just missing I don't know exactly how that happens but this card I can confidently say is not mint it does have a print line right there and then it's got a ton of those little speckles so whatever grade we get on them I think that's gonna be okay the onyx and the Pidgeot these ones look super clean all right. Whew. We're opening up these vintage Japanese booster packs. These came out over 20 years ago, if you can believe it. If you look, this was 300 yen when it came out. The price here is 30,000 yen. Are you kidding me? That is actually crazy. It goes from 300 to 30,000. This one went from 291 to 27,000 yen. Okay. Whew. I'm not... I'm not nervous, you're nervous. Oh my goodness. Now I believe the hit is right here. Energy, a Vaporeon, that's a dark Vaporeon right there, I believe. We got a coughing, Dratini. Oh, ah! And, oh, a Chabak. We got an Arbok, a dark Arbok holographic. Up next, we've got the Gym Heroes booster pack. Whew. We've got a Brock Sandslash. How cute. We got a uh, stadium right here. 
Eric is Bellsprout. I love how they really like literally every single Pokemon gets a trainer attached to it. And it like, I don't know, it makes it like that much more personal. It's like you're going along with the Pokemon journey, you know? We've got another Brock's Geodude. So there's two different Brock's Geodude. We actually got both of them. And, oh, Misty Seedra, check that out. Wow, that's really, really nice. I adore that, y'all. Fingers crossed. Dark Charizard, Dark Blastoise, Dark Raichu coming up. We'll see what we get. I wouldn't complain about a Dark Dragonite either. Here we go. Last pack magic here. We've got the Meowth. We've got a War Turtle. All right. The Goop Gas Attack. Ah. Yo, I skipped a few. We got a Ponyta here. I always love that Ponyta art. Very cool. It's like all nice and soft, you know? Oh, is that an imposter, Professor Oak? This art is absolutely amazing. Oh my god, I might just send that one in just for fun as well. That's a really, really sick art there. We got a Porygon in a little box. That's adorable. Here we go, we're getting close to our, our hit here. We've got a Slowpoke. We've got a Dragonair. And... Oh, we got a Gyarados holographic. From our three vintage booster packs, we did get some pretty cool stuff. Holographic, Misty Seedra, Dark Arbok, and a Gyarados to add to our CGC grading haul. But I think our stack of cards here is looking pretty, pretty good. I'm really excited to see what our grades come back with here. Wish us luck on all of these. Now it's time to go ahead and get them all set up to send off to get graded. We've got everything listed out here. I'm gonna go ahead and double check that I have all of these in order and then I just gotta package them up and get them on their way. <laughs> I'm rubber banding up all of our cards to make sure they kind of stay in a, like a brick. Ooh. I'm gonna put them in some bubble wrap. Bonus bubble wrap. I'm gonna go ship this off. We'll see what the grades are when this comes back. Wish me luck. 80,000 impressions later. It has been a couple of months since I last saw these cards. This is gonna be just a true delight. What a treat. Ooh, this is nice. This is real nice. Oh my goodness, look at them all. So this is actually my first go at getting the brand new CGC slabs with the new label on them. In our previous CGC return videos, we actually saw the old label. And in these ones, it is a brand new redesigned, super sleek looking label. So I cannot wait to check it out. I kind of put these in order to end off with some of our biggest cards that we sent off, some of the ones that we literally spent hundreds of dollars on and tens of thousands of yen on. My goodness. <coughs> here we go, our first one here is Pikachu. Oh! <laughs> Starting it off with the entire submission, we got a pristine 10 Pikachu. That is amazing. The Unigaba Jolteon promo. Let's go ahead and see. Dude, we're two for two. Are you kidding me? Three, two, one. Oh, we got a nine on the mischievous P2. And actually now that we have the two different graphics here, you can actually see on the slabs, the difference here between getting a pristine 10 and any of the, I think it's any of the other grades, including a gem mint 10. The biggest difference is that the letters and numbers here have this really cool gold, like shimmery look to them. And then this part is also like a goldish tint while this one is just plain white all the way across. Still looks very clean, but those 10, like we're really searching for those pristine tens because the label looks so awesome on those. Wait, wait, the back even gives it away. I didn't even notice that. Oh, <laughs> let's go. How awesome, the Blissey V alternate art coming back with a pristine 10. Who to thunk? This was one of the more random ones that I got. I remember Nate telling me after I bought this one, he's like, why did you even pick that one? I was like, I don't know. I like the little slippers in the boots. Oh my gosh, look it! I'd sent off two illustration contest ones. 
Oh, okay. So our two illustration contest cards, we've got a pristine 10 on the Bulbasaur and a gem mint 10 on the Arcanine right there. Nice! I ended up picking this up, not truly knowing its origin, but I loved the rainbow thing. Like straight up, I think it was the rainbow that got me. Summer Festa promotional card. Pretty cool, a little Summer Festa situations. Pa! Ooh, oh. <laughs> not the double whammy! Oh. The little serotonin boost, I get when I see the back being gold like this. Let's see what card it is. Oh, yo! Pristine 10, that's so sick. Oh, there we go. We got a pristine 10 on the Vulpix, a gem mint 10 on the Shaman, and a pristine 10 on the Reshiram. Dude, that's sick. I know some of those games are straight up just a trap. Like you're gonna lose every time. Honestly, I know when we played that, we didn't break even, but it is good to know, even with the cards that we got for the secret rares, they were actually in good condition. Like they weren't just like random, you know, junk cards. They were actually good quality cards. Up next, we got a couple of funky monkeys that we got from a card store. I remember this vividly. These ones are super cool. Some of the vending series cards. We got, oh, a mint nine and a gem mint 10. That's sick, the Imakuni's nasty plot had the gem mint 10, and then the Pokemon machine from vending series three had the mint nine. All right, we got the Southern Islands Vile Plume. This was the one that we got from a card store. Now, once again, there is another Southern Islands card a little bit later on in the submission, that Mew that we got, that Mew Reverse. So 8.5, that's a near mint plus on that one. We got a near mint eight on the Heracross, and ooh, another eight right there. These cards were estimated to get a six, a six, and a seven respectively. So these cards actually got better grades than anticipated by over a full grade. That's wild. Oh man. To be honest, I mean, this is the lowest grade that we've gotten all day, but I was really not expecting this one to get this low of a grade. Yeah, I guess maybe I didn't scrutinize it as hard as I should have. So 6.5 on the Chikorita. You hate to see it. You really do. <laughs> My son. This one picked up on a whim. Indonesian Growlithe. You know, I read that as Indo Market. It says Indo Merit. Like literally this entire time, I thought it said Indo Market, like it was a grocery store chain or something the big boys. Oh. So we got a gem mint 10 here on the Onyx from the Southern Islands collection. That is awesome. Oh man. We also got another gem mint here on the Pidgeotto and I believe the Mew is up next. Oh, another gem mint 10. So all three of those Southern Islands collection cards that we got from that one little three card promo set, all three of them got gem mint tens. So that's pretty cool. I dig that. Ooh. This one admittedly was a fun ski that I threw in there that we got from our team rocket pack. Thought that was super interesting. And then that's buck wild. What happened to this guy? This was the one that we got from our team rocket pack. So the random trainer uncommon, bro. Random trainer uncommon comes back with a pristine 10. We have gone through this whole top row. Now we're on to the big boys. This is big boy business. Let's go ahead. Oh, let's go. Oh man, yo. What happened to the Team Rocket packs? Presumably mint condition cards that came out of those sealed Team Rocket booster packs both came back with near mint to mint eights, which is not terrible, but luckily the gym pack came through and we got a pristine 10 on the Misty Seedra right there. That is amazing. So we're moving on to the trainer full arts now. These are some of the ones that I just snagged individually out of those cases because, you know, they looked cool basically. But as you can see, I already know one of them has the pristine 10 and both of them. Oh, let's go. These ones, I absolutely love the art on these and I'm so happy that they got good grades. You did well in school, buddies. You did well in school. Two pristine tens. You love to see it. You really do. Dude, this is such a good day. I've been so excited to take a look at these returns. You have no idea. Oh, I know what's up next. All right, this is gonna be a good one. This one, y'all, I have really high hopes for this. Uh, yo, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Let's go. Oh, how exciting. The Reds challenge in a pristine 10. Amazing with the Bulbasaur there. I love the art on that. These like GX era tag team cards are so sick. Reds challenge in a pristine 10. We got the Blues tactics in a gem mint 10. The red and blue, you know, this was a little strategic. I had the red and the blue and the red and blue. The red and blue got a pristine 10 as well. That is awesome. Yay, good day. We are now into 
Pokemon Center promo territory with our Pikachu Pokemon Center promos. Oh man, I mean an eight is still good. An eight is still pretty solid. Near Mint to Mint is good. Eight on the Yokohama reopening Pokemon Center Pikachu promo there. We got a nine on the Kyoto Pokemon Center. So that's not too bad. So Kyoto got a nine. Oh, Shibuya got an eight. Oh no. And Osaka got a nine. And I'm sure I discussed this as I was getting these, but all of these Pokemon Center promos came from Pokemon Centers that we actually visited on our trip to Japan. So all of these now have a very special place in my collection and in my heart because I actually got to see these Pokemon Centers in person. Very happy to have those. Before we get into these last three, let's go ahead and reveal the giveaway cards that I sent off. We've got a War Turtle and a Gem Mint. 10. This is a dark war turtle and a dark Vaporeon. Those were just some fun extras that I figured I'd throw in there for you guys from our team rocket packs and I thought the condition on them looked pretty good so I'm glad they both got 10 so I'm gonna be giving those away to the super duper Danny community as a big thank you for watching. To enter to win one of these cards all you need to do is drop a like on this video make sure to leave a comment in the comment section below and make sure you're subscribed to super duper Danny. Now we're down to the last three cards here and if you remember these are some pretty big boys, all right? These two right here should be our Munch Scream promo cards, which means that this one is our Red's Pikachu full art, which, man, that was one of the coolest cards that we got on the whole adventure. So let's see what we got on the Red's Pikachu full art. Oh, yo! I don't think that was in focus. Pristine 10 right there on the Reds Pikachu. That's amazing. This is the highest possible grade that we could have gotten. What an awesome, awesome snag on that one. That is so sick. These two cards were the ones that we spent the most on independently. Obviously, we got the sealed packs and all that kind of stuff. But I think on its own, these two were the ones that we did spend the most money on. So... Three, two, one. Oh man! Two Gem Mint 10s right there on the Rowlet and the Eevee Munch promo cards. I absolutely adore these cards and I'm super happy to have both of them in 10. So once again, Gem Mint 10, really solid there. I am super happy with our haul, everybody. So overall, these are all the pristine 10s that we got, this whole stack. I really have no complaints here. I'm super happy with how this turned out. And um, man, I can't wait to go back to Japan and do another one. Whew. Good day for a good day is what I like to say. So huge thank you to CGC for making this whole video possible, y'all. This genuinely could not have happened without their help. They got their new slabs, new designs, new graphics, new grading scale, new all of that. So check them out in the description below. But thank y'all so, so much for kicking it with me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.